Hello everybody and welcome back to my sunroom on this beautiful day in June. I think that we've had the prettiest spring season here in East Tennessee that I have ever seen. So I thought it's going to be a really, really good day for me to do a hands-on video for you all with all this light back in my sunroom today. I'm going to be watering some of my orchids that I'm growing in bark. I've had a lot of questions about how I do that. Um, just specific things that a picture is worth a thousand words. So I thought instead of trying to explain everything that I would just show you how I do that. I have two orchids here that I'm going to show you how I'm going to fertilize them today. It's the same if you fertilize or if you water. Uh, what I do is I soak them this time of the year for about 45 minutes when I water them. Several of you have asked me why I'm starting to do that. I am getting better results. That's the whole thing about growing orchids is, you know, I like to do whatever gives me the best results. My plants don't get dehydrated. They look just happier through the week. I'm not having to water them as much. Um, the bloom cycles are actually lasting longer because when your orchid gets too dry, it can actually make the blooms fall quicker than they normally would. And as you see, my blooms have lasted such a long time this year. So I'm going to continue to do this. I'm just having better results. They look happier. They're better hydrated. That works for me. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I've got a Phalaenopsis here and I've got a Dendrobium Kiki that I'm going to water for you today and show you exactly what I do. Okay, so on the right, I've got my kaleidoscope fowl. And as you see, I'm going to be watering this in something clear so that you all can really see it. Um, it's pretty simple, but you know, sometimes the most simple things in growing are the most profound. I would have loved to seen this when I first started growing orchids. This would have helped me a great deal. What you're trying to do, and I know you all know what kind of tea I like. I love this tea. Um, hello to my friend Sharon in Arizona <laughs> with the Arizona tea. Okay, and so I'm just going to keep pouring this in kind of slowly. I don't like to get it on the leaves at all. And as you see, it's going to shift on me a little bit. And that's the reason why I have my little blue bear. I know y'all are wondering what's the little blue bear for. He is my counterweight. It seems like when I do, when I water like this, it does shift the weight of the orchid somewhat. So what I do is I put my little bear in here. He's kind of, he's a glass bear. He's pretty heavy. He's cute too. And I just set him right there. And I know my orchid's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. And I kind of like the bear too. So, okay. So as you see, I've watered up to about, oh, an inch underneath the lip of the pot. This is enough. I don't want to go all the way up because I have found that if I do, it really dislodges the bark and I don't want to do that. So I'm wanting to water it up to about, oh, about an inch from the top. Okay, and then this dendrobium, this is going to be really easy. Here we go. This little guy, he's a dendrobium kiki, as you see, and I've got a new growth on him there. So I'm going to be fertilizing him a lot because when your dendrobiums, when the canes are growing, oh my, you have to stay ahead of all that growth. So here again, we're just soaking the bark and I'm not going I'm not going to go all the way up to the top of the lip. Like I said, your, your bark is just going to kind of float on the top um, if you do that. So I hope you can see that, but it's all the way up to about right here. And that's good. And I've been doing this for about, I've been doing this now for about a year, soaking them like this. I used to not do that. I really don't know why I didn't do that. Um, I always just ran it through, let it set for just a few minutes 
in its decorative pot, you know, which meant it only soaked on the bottom for about, oh, about the last, the, about the bottom inch of the pot. It soaked on in the fertilizer or in the water for about 10, 15 minutes, and then I drain it away. But I found that when I give them a really good drink and I let them soak like this, they just do better. Like I said, I don't have any dehydrated roots. Um, and I don't know why I didn't think of this before. So I just had to share with you all, this is what I'm doing now. You know, everybody changes what they do with their orchids. You learn new things, your skill set changes, you improve the longer that you grow orchids. You learn little tips and little tricks for your area. You know, not everybody grows their orchids just alike, and your area is gonna be different than my area. Like, let's say you live in a very, very humid environment. Are you gonna to need to soak for this long? Probably not, unless you just like to. Um, some people still do when they live in humid environments. If your orchids do well that way, then that's what you need to continue to do. If you live in a dry area, uh, you're probably gonna to wanna to soak your orchids for a while. You're gonna just be able to keep them hydrated a whole lot better. And you're gonna notice that both of these are in Orchiata bark, which I just highly recommend. It is the best bark that I've ever used. In my opinion, it's the best bark on the planet to put your orchids in. Every orchid that I have put in Orchiata bark has just thrived. But if you're growing in moss, you're not going to use this same technique. You're going to let it run through the pot and then you're going to discard that water. You don't ever want to get your moss too soppy. If you let it get too damp, it's like a sponge. And you know how when a sponge just gets soppy wet, it takes a long time for that to dry out. So if you want to see how I water and fertilize my orchids that are growing in moss, I will place a link to that video in the description box below for you. So now I'm gonna let these soak for about 45 minutes. Again, it is summertime here in East Tennessee. It's gonna be in the 80s today, so we're having much warmer weather now, and my air conditioning system is cutting on as well. So that kind of gives you an idea of what my environment and my climate is. After 45 minutes, I'm going to just lift these up out of the water. This one has got a huge, huge outer pot like this, and it goes back in that. Then I will just lift this up. Do you see how well this is watering? Yes, these, these roots are soaking up this fertilizer water. That is exactly what I want to happen. And if you're wondering, I'm fertilizing right now at about, um, today I'm doing about 240, 240 parts per million. If you don't know what that is, if you want to see my fertilizer recipe, I will refer you back to my latest fertilizer recipe as well. And I hope that this hands-on tutorial on how I water my orchids in bark. I hope that this has helped you all and answered all of your questions. If I've missed something, if I've forgotten something, if there's something else that you all are wanting to know about this process, just leave me a question in my comment section below. And I thought I would give you all a beautiful view of my fuller sunset and my Tahiti sunsets as well. I, I know these are a crowd favorite, so I'd love to say the blessing over you all before I end my video. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. You all make it a great day. We'll talk to you next time.